Having a properly set up guitar can drastically improve how your guitar feels to play, making it not only feel better, but also improving its tone, tuning across the neck, and even fixing issues like fret buzz. Hi, I'm Connor from Roundtable Audio, and today I'll show you how to set up an electric guitar. In my opinion, setting up your guitar is one of the easiest and cheapest improvements you can make to it. I think it's an essential skill for any guitar player to have. I recommend following this guide step by step and in the order that I've set, but I've put in chapters if you need to jump between sections. Before making this video, I created a poll to see how often people are setting up their guitars. The results showed that most people only set up their guitar when they notice a problem, which is fair enough. There's no right or wrong answer as to when you should set it up. I like to check my guitar setup every few times I change my guitar strings, so that will generally be a few times a year. But I'll definitely perform a full setup if I'm changing to a lighter or heavier string gauge, or if I notice a problem like fret buzz when I'm playing. Once you know how to set up your guitar, you'll get a feel for what timescale works best for you and your guitar. To set up your guitar, you're going to need a few tools. I've linked everything that you need down in the description below. Here's what you'll need. A Phillips head screwdriver. A ruler that can measure in 64ths of an inch a hex key that's the right size for your guitar's truss rod. Depending on your bridge type, either a hex key for strat style bridges or a flathead screwdriver for tunematic style bridges. A capo, a set of feeler gauges, a new set of guitar strings, and a guitar tuner, one that can take a direct signal from your guitar. As a tip, I recommend getting a dedicated guitar maintenance kit. You can buy pre-made kits like this one that I use, or you can put one together yourself by getting the individual tools. Whatever you choose to do, I really recommend having one as it helps to have all the tools in one place ready to go. The parts we'll be adjusting are small and can easily be damaged, so whatever you use, make sure that it's the right size for the screw or nut that you're adjusting. The first step when setting up your guitar is to change your strings. Older strings can be damaged or worn, which can cause them to slip out of tune or have other problems that can lead to a less accurate setup. If you've only recently changed your strings, then you should be fine. But if you've got old strings, then it's essential that you swap them out or else your setup won't be right. While your strings are off, I really recommend cleaning your guitar. This removes any built up dirt that can make your guitar harder to play. Also, lubricating the string contact points will ensure a smoother path for the string, which will help with the setup. I've made a video here that fully explains how to clean your electric guitar. While my guitar's like this, I also like to check that everything's as tight as it should be. So, now is a good time to check for any loose screws or bolts and tighten them up. Once your new strings are on, it's time to check your guitar's neck relief. This is how much bend there is in your guitar's neck. Too much one way or the other can cause playing problems like fret buzz. Your guitar's neck relief is set by adjusting the metal rod that runs through the length of the neck called the truss rod. Some people have concerns about adjusting their own truss rod. And while it is something that should be approached with caution, as long as you're not forcing it and you only make small adjustments at a time, you'll be completely fine. But if you're not confident doing it yourself, then take it down to your local guitar shop because they'll know exactly what to do. First, let's start by measuring the neck relief by checking the distance between the strings and the eighth fret, the wire, not the fretboard itself. When you're checking the relief, put the guitar in the playing position. This takes any pressure off the neck that could distort the results. As we're only interested in the amount of neck bow, it's important to remove other factors that affect your string's height, like your guitar's nut and bridge. To do this, place the capo on the first fret. Then, when you're measuring the gap, press down on the fret where the neck meets the body with your free hand. On this guitar, that's around the 17th fret. The ideal amount of neck relief varies depending on your guitar's fretboard radius, which is how curved it is. If you're not sure what your guitar's fretboard radius is, I'd say give it a quick search now because it's important for this step. Here's the measurements that you'll need. Now, take the correct feeler gauge for your radius and pass it under the low E string, remembering to press down on the other fret with your free hand. Make sure that the feeler gauge passes straight down, parallel with your fretboard, and not at an angle. It should pass through the gap while making contact with both fret wire and string, but without any excess friction. If there's a lot of friction or too large of a gap, then you'll need to adjust your guitar's truss rod. On most guitars, the truss rod is accessed at the top, but you might have to remove a little cover. But on some bolt-on neck guitars, you actually have to loosen the strings and pop the neck out of the neck pocket to access the truss rod, but this is a lot less common. To adjust your truss rod, take a hex key that's the right size for your truss rod's nut, which usually would have come with your guitar. Then to increase the amount of relief and make the gap bigger, turn the hex key a quarter turn away from you. To decrease the amount of relief and make the gap smaller, turn it a quarter turn towards you. 
Again, it's really important that you work in small increments and don't force it, as that can really damage your guitar. If your truss rod is being a bit stiff, then try loosening it first by an eighth of a turn, and that should get it moving. If it's still not budging, then take it down to a guitar store. It's much better to have a pro look at it than risk damaging your guitar. Once you've made your adjustment, reach in your guitar and measure the gap again. Repeat this until the feeler gauge is just touching both the fret wire and string without any excess friction. Once you've finished, you can take the capo off. The next thing to do is set the string height. Setting the right string height will make your guitar easier to play. The aim is to get your strings as low to the fretboard as possible without causing fret buzz. In my opinion, this is one of the easiest adjustments you can make with the biggest payoff. It can completely change how your guitar feels to play. Start by measuring the gap between the low E string and the 17th fret wire using a ruler that can measure in 64 of an inch. We'll be adjusting each string one at a time. For my bass strings, I'm looking for a measurement around about 4 or 5 64 of an inch. On my lighter strings, I'll aim for around 3 or 4 64 of an inch. It depends on the string gauge and the strings that I'm using. If I can go lower, I do, but I'll know I've gone too far if the strings buzz against the frets. To raise or lower the strings on a Stratocaster style bridge, you can set each string height individually by adjusting the saddles. Simply turn the screws on the saddle with a hex key to raise or lower them. Here I'm using a hex attachment on my screwdriver. It's important to make sure that the saddle is level, it shouldn't be slanted, so adjust each screw evenly. On a Tunematic style bridge, you can't set the height individually, instead you can only adjust either end of the bridge, so bear that in mind. Once you've adjusted the height of the string, tune the string again and measure the gap again. Have a play across the string's length and see if there's any buzzing or dead frets. If there is, you'll need to raise the string. String height isn't set in stone, you can adjust it to whatever feels right for you. Work your way across each string, making sure that your guitar is fully in tune each time you measure and adjust the heights. As I said, I don't use a capo for this, as I like the height and depth of the nut slots to be part of the equation. But I'm not going to cover how to adjust your nut slots in this video, as I really think that's a job best left for the pros. Filing down the nut slots too far can cause fret buzz and other performance problems, which can lead to the whole nut needing to be replaced. If you're concerned that your nut slots might be too high or low, then I recommend taking your guitar to your local guitar shop and letting them have a look. You can even get the whole nut replaced, which is a relatively cheap upgrade to make, and it can change how your guitar sounds for the better. Now it's time to adjust your pickup heights. It might seem like a small detail, but your pickup's heights can really affect your guitar's output, and in some cases, it's fine tuning. Again, this is down to personal preference. There's some ballpark measures that I recommend starting off with and then adjusting to your liking from there. To measure the pickup height, press the low E string down on the last fret of the fretboard. Then take a ruler and measure the gap between the top of the pickup and the bottom of the string. Repeat this on the high E string. As a general rule, you want a very slight slant on the pickup, with the high E string being marginally closer to the pickup. For me, I like to keep my pickups around about an eighth of an inch away from my strings. Again, I'll slightly fine tune that when playing later. To adjust your pickup's height, find the mounting screws. To raise the pickup, tighten the screws by turning them clockwise. To lower them, turn them anti-clockwise. They only need a very slight turn to change the height. Your pickup shouldn't get anywhere near this low, but just be aware that if you loosen the screws too much, the pickups can fall out from their mounts, and it's a pain to get them back in. So, only make small turns at a time. Now, have a play on your guitar and you can raise or lower the pickup's height to whatever sounds best for you. Avoid raising it too high though, as this can cause you to catch it while you're strumming, and it can cause your strings to ping off the magnets. Repeat this for each pickup on your guitar. It's important to make sure that your pickups all have a similar output level, so when you're making adjustments, make sure that one doesn't sound louder than the others. The last thing to do when setting up your guitar is setting the intonation. Your guitar's intonation is how in tune it is across the entire fretboard. Just because your string's in tune, it doesn't necessarily mean that the notes on your fretboard will be. The intonation is set by subtly changing the length of your string by adjusting the saddles. Again, this is another really easy adjustment that can make your guitar sound so much better. To set your guitar's intonation, first make sure that your guitar is fully in tune. It's also really important that you're using fresh strings when setting your intonation, as using old strings is completely pointless. Old strings can be damaged, worn, stretched out, so any reading that you take might not be accurate. Starting with the low E string, play the open string, and then play the 12th fret. The 12th fret is an E note, so it should be the same as the open string. A quick tip, try and play the note as normally as you can. When you're focusing on playing a specific note, it's easy to push too hard or pick too hard, which can bend the string out of tune and not give you an accurate reading. I'd say just give it a few practices of playing it normally first. 
Now, see whether the note is sharper, higher pitched than it should be, or flatter, lower pitched than it should be. If the note is sharp, then tighten the screw by turning it clockwise. If the string is flat, then loosen the saddle. Now, reach in your guitar, as the string will be a different pitch depending on whether you loosened or tightened it. It's really important that you reach in your guitar every time you make an adjustment to your saddle. Once your string's in tune for both the open string and 12th fret, repeat this across each string until they're all in tune. If your guitar saddle is all the way back and won't move any further, and the intonation still isn't right, then check your guitar's neck relief again, because that's the most common problem that I see. If you have a tunematic style bridge and you're still having problems, you can actually take it out and flip it round, and that can help because of how the saddles are shaped. If you're still having problems and it's only a cent or two out, I'd suggest just leaving it, as you probably won't hear it anyway. But if you want it to be perfect, then take it down to your local guitar store. And that's it, your guitar's now fully set up, but it won't stay that way forever. Whether it's a change of strings, using a new string gauge, or even a change in the weather, there's a lot of different things that can mess with your guitar's setup. As I said, I recommend checking your guitar's setup every few string changes, just to stay on top of it. In my experience, it's a lot better than waiting for a problem to develop. So, how often do you check your guitar setup? Let everyone know down in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, consider giving it a like to help it reach more people, and stick around by subscribing for more guitar-related content. Thank you.